everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. In answer to this question that was put on here is it looks bad PR wise. It looks bad financially, but I mean, they already said in their quarter four financials that they don't plan on using Nijisanji EN in their growth projections. Uh, they don't plan on you know, factoring them in to any kind of growth. So that pretty much left them abandoned for the most part. And that sucks. That's unfortunate. Should never happen. That's the way it works with Nijisanji, unfortunately. Big thing is it means the office has officially given up on them. There won't be a recovery turnaround. In terms of direct impact, these are no longer a branch. It, they no longer have a branch identity, which hurts discovery a lot. So their growth will stall out even harder. Right now, people who find EGEN liver, they may still look around for the branch. But when the branch doesn't exist, they just look into JP. So it'll help JP more than it'll help EN. Also means no more EN waves. As much as we laugh about the frequency of which the waves happen in Sanji, no new talents means that there's a lack of excitement. A lack of excitement means lack of money. I mean, the money's not going to come in. No support, no promotion, no audition. More event from here on out, and just no hope. KR and ID were not disbanded overnight. They got merged, and then they slow and painful death, which is what's going to be happening with Niji uh, EN, if it happens. VTuber industry is already big in Japan. The mainstream market is still making money. By merging EN to JP, it's a state enact that Niji Sanji already gave up on the overseas market, which is going to look very bad on financials because... Uh, investors want the overseas market money. Investors want companies to go into the overseas market. It's going to be very bad. And it's going to be leaving uh, something to something like Hololive. Investors may pull out of Nidhi Sanji, go to Hololive, which is going bigger and better in uh, in e EN sphere and overall in the overseas market because they have their Indonesia branch still very strong. I can sure say that uh, investing in Hololive for long term is a good thing because they're going to continue to grow. And that's the main issue there. The growth will stall on Niji Sanji's side and on the EN side of Hololife, it'll continue to grow. This is one of the positive moments inside of Arkuro Sanji. There are those who's not all just negative. This person was mourning the fact that Lazulite debut song uh, made them sad and depressed. I was there when they debuted. I was happy and excited. We watched two out of six graduating and for those to be the talents I think are doing the best, it's depressing. It feels sort of miserable even though I understand why it's occurring. Similar about Alexium. Definitely the end of the VTubing era, and it's not fun to have been at its birth and see it slowly die. I'm just grateful I still have Hollow Life. The times are filling up my missing spots, and it's good to mourn your Oshis. Like it's good if your Oshis leave, it's fine to mourn them. I will not knock you for that at all. Other people might. I won't. Song is now abandoned by the Lazulite Gen itself. They haven't sang it once since the stream appeared. It died for the stream, for the stream to exist. Diamond City Lights will be a song left in history. It was preserved by a bygone era, which was once full of life. It is now an undeath mode until it's gone. So yeah, it it's good to mourn that. It's fine to mourn that. You're not going to get any hate here, at least. There are very various different message boards that have a lot of Nidhi Sanji related stuff. One of them is Yahoo JP in general. And then there's the Yahoo uh, Finance board. This, I believe, is just the Yahoo JP board that we're going to take a look at right now. It's right here. On the left is the Japanese. Right is the uh, translations. A lot of people on X are saying that it was canceled to protect fans and performers due to a threat. There is no verification of that. But since they're going through it with the booth, I think that was wrong. I mean, the fans over there will be exposed to danger then. Rather, with many other companies participating, if there was a threat which warranted the canceling of the concert, they would explicitly issue an alert. Like what happened with that uh, independent VTuber, or the smaller VTuber that was part of an organization that does a lot of idol lives that had a threat of an explosive device. You know, things like that. Some information floating around that the ticket sales weren't good. That's the cause for this. Then I guess it can't be helped. I think overseas activities is important, but performing a concert under those conditions would put a psychological burden on the performers. I don't think so, so much on this one. However, even as Vispo is putting the effort into overseas expansion. Yes, Vispo is. Idolian always has been. Uh, you have Aka Virtual who's doing it now too. Not to mention a condition to be able to hold large scale overseas events in the near future. So people are, you know, copium, wanting it to be big. Some speculation of threats were the case, according to current information. Surely it seems that their seats were poorly filled, uh, played an influence on that. Past concert cancellations were uh, likewise in consideration of the influence on the talents. Although there's some distrust towards management, there are also supportive voices towards the talents. I support the talents themselves. You know, it sucks to not have something like that go on. It really does, especially when you plan for it, when you actually plan for it. 
Uh, talent's own efforts, so I'd like them to reward them. Hollow sold out in 30 minutes. Niji barely sold out at all. North America. Uh, in some way, it became an unforgettable experience. Yeah, in the wrong way, pretty much. If people were saying the last comment made me laugh out loud. It's funny because it's true. The booth theory, if canceling the concert due to threat, then they should pull the booth as well. Ticket sell rat is making more sense, both financially and logically. Like I said many times, it depends on how much it would cost them to just not do it and pay the penalty versus paying for the full venue and then not having enough to cover the full venue. That's the big issue that they're going to be facing because if you can't cover the full venue, then you're screwed. But if you can get maybe like 25% or 30% uh, penalty or whatever it is for the two days that you were going to do or the, or the moments that you were going to do, the time slots you were going to do, it is probably cheaper and easier for you to do that. You can recover that with Super Chats and ad revenue on your stream. Here's a little uh, thought exercise, I guess you could call it. People are saying that there might be a sunk cost fallacy when people are uh, doing graduations or and it's also can be worsened by internal gaslighting. Make them hesitate and let go of skin suits and other assets that may be confiscated in Nidhi at graduation. Nidhi Sanji might have gaslit people into thinking what they currently have were worth more than switching to another path. Every single liver has said, I believe this because every single liver that has left has said that they always felt like there would be nothing outside of Nidhi Sanji. That they, like for example, Doki Bird said that she felt she was unmarketable. Nina felt that she was going to be nothing without Nidhi Sanji. Other people said that you know, uh, worth more than switching to another path. While proper calculations will show otherwise, other paths are more valuable. There are hidden costs like mental health decline, negative publicity, and so on that they keep, if they keep staying, contrary to the support they will get choosing another path. It's just economics and business side of it says, I will try to simplify the concept. Um, let's say just basically Liver had to pay 20K to get their career going in Sanji. They earn 2000 per month. It would take 10 months to, to get it, of course. To quit and restart, they will need 25K and earn 5K per month. Think that they only make 3K more. While the total expense they thought would be 45k, which they thought would take at least four to 45 months, uh, 45 out of 315 months to pay, which in reality, after only nine months, they would make net profit. So yeah, the 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 incorrect possible math, which would probably hit me, the math would be weird. Uh, in reality, nine months, 45 minus 25, 20k, more than nine times two, 18k. They continue as usual. So for nine months or longer plans, switching is the right move, but the sunk cost fallacy has deceived people into thinking switching would cost them more. And here's one way of thinking. Sunk cost fallacy was to be favoritism, internal chaos, public condemnation. Uh, I spent too much time in the Sanji, it'd be a waste to back out. Uh, sunk cost versus the future. That's why, and also you have people like Made Mint, Doki Bird, Matarakan, K9 Kuro, Michi Mochi V, all those who have left, as e, even from just the EN side, Bobon, all of them, they're doing better now than they did in Nidhi Sanji. They're recovering now more than they ever would in Nidhi Sanji because they're making more money. They have, you know, positive, uh, positive PR on their side. They have all these things. Uh, it's basically, yeah, it can be that way. It plays into the self-doubt, insecurity, fear that livers go through. So that's the main thing. It, it's unfortunate that they feel that way, but yes, it would be better if they left Nidhi Sanji and they would probably most likely do better there. People here are saying, you know, something's odd. How did Ayakari's mascot get nearly 90k subscribers and 20k viewers? Maybe that 21k viewers, if they're actually getting that, that'd be great. People are saying that there's botting involved, 93.3k subscribers. Maybe people like Loon Loon. Maybe they're thinking that they're cute. Maybe that's what they're thinking. That could very well be the case. I don't want people to just hate on a character, a person, just because they're part of Nidhi Sanji. If they actually make it interesting for people, actually make things interesting, then go ahead, do it. They're in the honeymoon phase and it's a non-human model. It's a very long time. People enjoy their liver. Only time will tell if these viewers stay and if they do, good for Loon Loon. Otherwise, stop trying to make a conspiracy out of everything. I agree. Nothing odd about it since it's only been a couple of days since they debuted and they're still in the honeymoon phase. And also, like they said, it's a cute character. People, especially in Japan, they gravitate towards cute characters. If you have a cute character, you're going to get a lot of people. Nidhi Sanji or not, you're going to get a lot of people. So I don't see this as like botting or anything like that. I just see it as people liking this character. And that's it, you know? It says something you don't see much in corporate VTubing, something new. I don't mean any disrespect there. It's legit. Good for them. I actually do like that Niji is just... Uh, We'll do just blatantly non-human models. Cool idea. They're trying something new. We can hate the company and its management and still celebrate the wins of the talents. That's what I always say. I always say that. And I always get hate for it, but I'm going to continue saying that. Like, blame the company, hate the company, not the liver. Unless the liver's done something to be hated for, do not hate them for it. Just being, just being in the company, you know? Well, it's not unreasonable to assume that many contacts are 
recent debuts signed were signed prior to the incident. Do wish them success and being found in some other agency. Yes. Like, I hope they get success there, and I hope they get success in another agency if they decide to do that. Nothing wrong with being successful. The difference of how Hololive and Nidhi Sanji interact with their new debuts. The main difference I felt between the Noth and Justice interaction with their Senpai is that before Justice even debuted, their speculation from the Senpai, a feeling of anticipation, uh, can be felt from the members. They interact on Twitter. They're showing interest in the new deb the debut people. Uh, while for the Noth, other than some token Twitter posts, I don't see older members talk about them. Other than that, now that they have debuted, you feel chemistry between uh, Justice and other Hollow members, like the TV coffee interactions. Atlantis Mume is a guardian of civilization back when Mume debuted. GG and Bao Bao, Crony and Gura banter. All of that stuff is working. They know, Hollow Life knows how to build up their uh, their talents, how to get talents, uh, you know, going properly. It's simple, really. You decided to debut his livers very frequently, so the arrival of each wave no longer feels special. You got so many that every time an announcement is made, you would just go another one. Yeah, exactly. It's That's the thing. They're just pushing them too closely together, which can cause issues. Not only because of frequency of debuts, but it's perceived quality as well. Like in the clip, Mori said that Five of the Myth was chosen among thousands to be the first to Hollow Yen. That made her feel motivated and inspired. She also comments that now to get into Hollow Life, it is no longer a few chosen among thousands, it's tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds. It is really, really seriously, they choose the best of the best. That's why I never have issues that I've not been chosen for Hollow Life because they're choosing the best of the best. And every single time I see other Hollow Stars debut and I see how talented they are, I'm like, well, that makes sense that I wasn't chosen, honestly. Because like, holy crap, some of these people are extremely talented. And that's the difference. Yes, Nidhi Sanji does have some good talents, but they do not push them as much as Hollow Life does. And that's a shame. Here's a little bit of a rumor, a little bit of a, you know, someone putting on a tinfoil hat. Recently noticed that Claude PL Twitter was no longer protected. Then I noticed these tweets all on the same day from all three TTT members. I wonder if something big is going on. It says, time flies. Uh, Peekaboo, I see you. Trying my best from Claude. This style was Victoria945. Trying my best from Claude. Uh, Kunai, missing my crew, I guess. I don't know what's going on. It could, it's, it's rumor, of course. Someone with a lot of experience in V Reveries collapse. When multiple people in the same agency post something on the same day in their PL Twitter, especially within a short period of time, alarm bells start ringing out for a lot of people. I had no idea what's going on here, and quite frankly, I think it's too early to tell, but it's kind of fun to speculate. Said elsewhere, Buniji Sanji Yen seems to be in a death spiral. Do I believe the rat that they're being merged next week? Not really. Probably going to be in a year, more than likely. Uh, I don't really see Yen lasting through the end of the year. I do remember the last time the trio were together. I don't remember the last time they were together. Uh, even Claude, they can't just fucking ask Claude Mark. There are a few theories. First one is, as you say, the other is hinted at BB's PL tweet is in regards to the recent tweet asking who were the content creations since 2020. Also the reason why Sayu posted in her IRL, uh, look, you know, that kind of thing. It's just, you know, different things happening. It's good to, um, it's good to, you know, just mention things. Just good to take a look at stuff. Um, BB's PL tweet regarding to recent tweet asking what content creations since 2020. So yeah, that could be one. Doki Bird owning her own corporation is no joke. She literally is a CEO. The copyright on the hype case is Doki Bird Production Inc. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There we go. And yes, Doki's company logo on the hype case. So I checked it's registered. Dang, it's registered. This BSP person, Dragoon Triple Zero BSP. It is a company number here in British Columbia. It is a BC company, British Columbia company. Business number is this one. Registry page, they don't have one. But on the 2nd of April, it was modified. I guess she had maybe an ink before or an LLC before. And this is her current one that she has right now. Corporation application of 2023. Last year, she had that. So she had the incorporation, incorporation application originally. It was probably Selen Inc. or something like that. And uh, now it's notice of alteration, which means that you're changing your name. You're changing something with it. So th because, you know, I have an LLC, you can do that. Um, you can change the name if you ever feel like it. So this is what happens this is awesome it's amazing it's good for her that helps her with paying mr man helps her with paying everyone else that she has to pay it makes sure that every bill gets through properly she really is a complete badass boss good her good to, good for her Ducky bird production there we go uh she actually has a website now she has a website still empty though uh gotta snag those domains before aunties get them absolutely you have to snag those domains pretty quickly she probably snagged it before she even made her production company. When she was thinking of going back to being Doki Bird, that's probably when she snagged it. She's smart, so she probably did at that point. 
Seems reasonable, honestly. She's big enough to get benefits from using it. She's at the point of hiring 37 different people for a project. I think running things at a company level is suitable at that point. And for VTubers, especially using a company as a public-facing legal entity, can also be pretty useful in certain situations, since depending on the type of company, the information of the owner may not be public. For instance, in the case where she's claiming copyright for this height case, she might otherwise have had to use her actual name if she didn't have a company name to use. That's why you use an actual company name. Her, this normal for big streamer, take money with a, without a huge tax. Uh, also, for copyright stuff, of course, all that kind of stuff, it's good. It's good that this is being done. I'm glad that she decided to take this big step. Memes, let me get them bigger for you so you can see everything. Uh, it is all these memes here of fights. Of course, the Anime Expo, it says, uh, it was her, it was her fans. It was because of their Niji, Niji stand complaints and blackmailing. Our fans have become easy, that's why it's not selling. Uh, cancelled, right? It was their fault. The live is not cancelled. Selen, why aren't they selling seats? Yeah, basically, the whole thing. Uh, you're fired from NGEN. It's from it's from right to left. And yeah, they aren't selling seats, and it's all because of Selen. Of course, that's the, that's the one that they're claiming. But you see these seats, it was less than 10% that was sold. So that was their fault. Next is this. It is Super Saiyan. She's going Super Saiyan, Super Selen levels. Uh, it's called Super Selen 2. And this is to go even further beyond. And then <laughs> she has the long neck. The long neck. Yeah, she has an absolutely long neck. Gotta love these things. You gotta love them. Here we have, as I was saying, someone that wants Rosami to leave soon. I agree with them because she deserves to be in a much better space than what she is at currently. Obviously, I have no intention of forcing her if she doesn't want to. Also, do not go into their streams and say, when are you going to graduate? Why are you still with Niji? That is harassment, and harassment is not allowed anywhere. I do not promote it. I do not say that it should be done. Nothing at all. It's just, you should never do that. Just let them be. If you don't like them, let them be. Want her to be happy, maybe go indie or reputable corpo. She doesn't need Nidhi Sanji to thrive. I just want her to know what she, what, that when she leaves, we will follow. She knows pretty much, people know that when she leaves, like she knows that when she leaves, people will follow. Look at Selene, look at Pomu, look at all these people, they follow. Look at Nina. She has examples everywhere that people will follow. Due to the boycott, but if she were to leave there immediately, I hope Nidhi Sanji Ian dissolves and they allow the talents to keep their models. It's not going to happen. It's a large corporation. Very rarely, even Hololive, very rarely allows their talents to keep everything. I think they haven't ever. So large corporations won't do that because they are a large corporation. They want to make money off of anything that they can with the, the likeness, the resemblance of the model there. Want talents within Niji to know they don't. we don't hate them. They know. They absolutely know. Uh, there is zero chance the company is, uh, is going to let the talents have the models, like, like I said. That's cold. He says he's just uh, inhaling copium. So they understand. The only one I still keep up with, she's the one of the best EN livers working right now, according to this person in their humble opinion. On one end, she's very creative and going indie would allow her creativity to flourish. She has connections outside of Niji. On the other hand, I'm not sure if she prefers the comfort and management Niji can provide. At the very least, right now, she has stability in the sense of she knows what to expect inside of Niji Sanji. She knows what to expect going through everything. Um, that in and of itself can cause a lot of people to stay because they have that uh, seniority, number one, the ability to know exactly what's going to be happening, you know, so they don't have any extra worries to have. Now we have Tenma, who scared the crap out of some people because they say, Dear Kampai Niki, which Kampai Niki is like, the, you know, the foreign Niki, the people outside, the US people, etc. Tenma from Face Connect talking about her experiences working for the company. And of course, a good type of stream with the black thumbnail. Nice, since it gave me a heart attack, though. Uh, also, hi again, OP. I got caught less than half of the stream. What a wholesome stream. It was just basically her giving her full rundown of how everything happened. She's very sweet. Ticked on the stream because of black screen. Black screen meta incoming. Hopefully not because it scares people. Fellow phase shield. Glory to Pipis, Pip, Pip, Pakistan. And may the reign of the fish last a million years. Mumi to, Mumi to you too, sir. So here we go. Here was the dear Kampai Niki. She actually just had... You know, she, her being there three years. Here's things, like she's mentioning also things that she wants to do, things that she wants to happen. We're gonna um, get you that audio there real quick, just so you guys can hear exactly what she's doing. Where we watch along, where we experience 12 hours of pure testosterone macho movie sweat, baby. And it was kind of awesome. And it was a relief to have a community supporting my love for macho movie. So yeah. Just little little fun times there. It was it wasn't like the other black stream from uh, from Nidhi Sanji. It was actually a good one in this case. Here is another part of something that I wanted to talk about. Where as you remember, when the whole Doki Bird thing situation happened on February fifteenth, 
where Selene was uh, terminated unceremoniously. A lot of people after that, after they found out about that, Clippers left, a lot of people left, Height left, a lot of organizations that were a part of them left, a lot of smaller uh, fans that were doing, you know, merch and were doing art for them and were doing all these things. A lot of artists left Nidhi Sanji, a lot of people left Nidhi Sanji because they felt betrayed by what they did to Selene. Because Selene, as a lot of artists came out to say, paid them really well and paid them out of her own pocket when Nidhi Sanji would not do that. She fought tooth and nail so that artists could get paid correctly. You have Daily Dose of Nidhi Sanji EN, you have PEF, Nidhi Sanji Clips, and Pandora's Box, which is mainly a Lyra Pandora. Uh, lose major clippers in the community, and those little that are left are very pure viewership compared to before. These are the ones that don't have that many views compared to how they used to be. Um, they still have good views in some cases, but you know, not as much as they had. I used to have a small Nidhi Sanji clip channel, haven't uploaded out in, in a while, trying to get into non Nidhi Sanji related clips. My recent three months ago clip was Quinn Bonet. I'm glad Nidhi Sanji is losing clippers because it means less exposure. And it hurts the good creators that are out there, of course, because exposure helps a lot. But in this case, it's not good to support the actual company. Uh, support your liver. If they are Nidhi Sanji, support them all you want, but don't support the company itself. Bringing you some positive news, among other things, they're doing a D&D co-stream starting now. They're, it's going to be a charity stream. Uh, Pals are lost at sea, charity stream, but I'm sure they'll be fine. They're doing VTuber SummerSlam, Shipwrecked, Do Not Peak Entertainment. They're all doing this right now. It's going on right now with Haruka, um, Iron Mouse, Kuro, and Zentreya. They're all very good streamers, all very good stuff. They're suffering, but it's for charity, so why do you... <laughs> why should anyone care? I bet they're going to get some wacky shenanigans. Of course, it's freaking Zentreya. It is Iron Mouse, Haruka, and, and Kuro. They're going to be getting... Be Shoujo in general gets into some crazy stuff. Commodore Melody, I'm already there watching. You know, basically, yeah, enjoy. There are a lot of people that are going to be having fun. You can watch the VOD later. You can watch whatever you want to watch. Just have fun. That's all I ask. This is Iron Mouse doing Elden Ring, of course. She has reached 2 million followers on Twitch, which is amazing. 2 million and 53 followers on Twitch. That's absolutely amazing. It's great. Uh, good for Iron Mouse. She deserves it. She absolutely does. There's just a short little snippet of something for Iron Mouse because, as you know, she has the amino deficiency thing. She has been doing a lot of streams for that. She did a subathon, an uncapped subathon. She um, has been doing songs and other things. She is one of the OGs in Twitch for VTubing. One of the, the, the mamas in this whole thing. One of the big moms in this whole thing. And she's always, always been very sweet to everybody. I haven't had any personal interactions with her, but she seems to have been sweet with a lot of people. So I'm taking based on what I'm seeing. And again, sending Iron Mouse and congratulations. I know she's never going to see it, but I give her the congratulations on my end. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out, Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.